Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing fungi or mushrooms. And the question we're going to try to answer or attempt to answer is really simple. Do fungi or mushrooms communicate with each other using a relatively similar concept to how we communicate right now? Using their own syntax, using their own words, but using a slightly different system involving electrical signals. And so in this particular video we're going to take a look at this relatively recent study about this topic and discuss what the experiments in the study have recently discovered along with our previous understanding about fungi communication. Although before we start I also wanted to mention that there are several other videos on this topic of animal communication and plant communication where we've previously tackled other species as well that have been discovered to have a certain type of communication including different types of fish, including various types of smaller animals, and even a strange species known as a slime mold that we've discussed in one of the previous videos, with many of these videos available in the description below. But today we're going to be talking about mushrooms, with a lot of these discoveries being relatively recent. And specifically, several studies from the last few years definitively established that mushrooms are able to produce electrical signals with many of these signals being really complex and many of them resembling signals we sometimes detect in other animals. For example, the electrical signals generated by neurons are not very different from what we see in mushrooms. And so because of this detection of neural-like activity in various fungal networks, for some of the modern scientists studying mushrooms, it sort of became a new passion, trying to figure out if mushrooms are indeed complex enough to produce various signals that can be used in communication. And a lot of the previous research in the last few years established that most of the electrical communication in various mushrooms usually occurs by conducting various electrical impulses through the very long underground filaments known as hyphae. Here's one from the very famous mushroom known as penicillin. With a lot of hyphae eventually forming something that looks like this. This doesn't actually look that different from a typical neuron. Although some of them do look different and simply represent these stalk-like long formations that usually grow in various directions looking for food. With many hyphae essentially being these really complex cells that slowly grow in different directions. And so for example when the hypha of a wood-eating mushroom starts to approach some kind of a wooden structure, the firing rates inside the hypha of these mushrooms will dramatically increase in complexity and of course in frequency. And so because of this it's previously been suggested that maybe these signals are used to communicate to other mushrooms or possibly even the same network of mushrooms where the potential food sources are. But it's also been suggested that maybe these signals mean nothing and maybe the mushrooms are not actually communicating anything to anyone. Maybe these signals for the most part are just a natural process that happens inside the cells. Even though a lot of studies have previously suggested that a lot of these signals do not appear to be random. And as these hypha grow in size and as they become more complex, they generally produce an even larger structure known as mycelium. With many different types of mycelium usually present on food that's rotten or spoiled, or even a piece of bread that became too old. And so some of the studies previously discovered that as mycelium grows in size and as hypha increase in numbers inside the mycelium, the electrical signals grow in complexity and in size as well. And even more intriguingly, by changing the electric field in a typical environment, the scientists have even been able to direct the growth of mycelium and hypha and sort of encouraging the growth of the mushroom in a certain direction. I guess you could see this as a type of a primitive communication with another species. Although these studies, these previous discoveries, would not really constitute any type of a complex communication. Right now what I'm describing is basically a kind of a stimulus interaction. An extremely simple way of guiding something by using electrical stimuli. That's not really communicating. But can mushrooms create more complex communication? Can they actually create, for example, words or sentences? Well, that's pretty much what this study was trying to discover or trying to figure out. And in this case it was discovered by using tiny microelectrodes inserted into various areas colonized by various fungi with the main purpose being looking for electrical activity across four types of fungi. Cordyceps militaris, Schizophyllum commune, Flamulina velutipis, also known as the velvet shank, and Amphalatoris nidiformis, also known as ghost fungus, with all four mushrooms exhibiting different types of electrical activity, suggesting slightly different types of communication or, in some sense, different types of language. 
But I think the most intriguing part of the study came from the analysis of all of these different spikes detected from the mushrooms, with each type of a mushroom producing different types of spikes and different types of electrical signals. Some would last for up to 21 hours, with the shortest one being just over one hour, with the actual amplitude in terms of voltage being anywhere from 0.03 millivolt up to 2.1 millivolts. But what's really interesting about all of this was that a lot of these spikes were sort of clustered, as in they were produced in chunks, they were produced almost like in what the scientists referred to as words, with different mushrooms producing different types of words, and at least one of these mushrooms, this one right here known as Schizophylum commune, producing 50 different associations of spikes or groups of spikes, or basically 50 different words that were observed and documented by the scientists. And just for fun, the scientist in this paper has also compared these spikes or these words to an average word length in a typical human language, in the process discovering that for many of these mushrooms, the average word length was extremely similar to a word length in English, approximately 5.97. For English it's about 4.8. And though it doesn't really mean that these are words or this is actually anything similar to human language, the discovery by itself could provide a lot of new opportunities for other scientists to maybe see what's actually happening here after all. In other words, nobody is really suggesting that mushrooms are really talking to each other using a similar type of communication or similar words to how we talk. But the actual connection and the actual signs that we're detecting here are extremely intriguing. And just the fact that there are so many similarities in information processing between different species already sort of implies we need to study this more. And especially because this is somewhat similar to the electrical communication inside a typical neuron of a more complex animal. With I guess one main question being of course, what exactly are they talking about and what is this language? And one possible answer right now is that, well, either nothing or something extremely simple. Something in regards to potentially hazards or different types of food, or maybe giving each other warnings about various toxic environments. In other words, nobody really knows. At the same time, it's definitely not nearly as complex as anything we have in, for example, mammals, and it's extremely slow. A single signal here takes a few hours. So that means that by the time the single word of a fungal language is finished, the more complex electrical simulations inside a typical human brain would have produced trillions and trillions and trillions of signals, completely dwarfing any type of communication happening in a mushroom. Nevertheless, the discovery, along with previous discoveries in the last few years, are actually extremely interesting. Mostly because one day we could maybe find a way to either communicate with these mushrooms and help them grow in the way we want them to grow, or potentially find even more efficient ways to grow various mushrooms for human consumption or to improve our health. For example, what if we could find a way to communicate with penicillium directly in order to help us produce even more penicillin even faster. That would be something on a completely new level in terms of our ability to communicate with life around us. But for now, I guess baby steps. Cool discovery, still not certain what is actually discovered here, but something that could be investigated in some of the future studies in order to learn what mushrooms are really talking about. On that note, check out the relevant links and the paper in the description below, and all of the previous videos about other types of animals communicating in unusual ways in the description as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.